Hey everyone, welcome back to Xfold Tech, and today I got another box. So, this one is uh, going to be something really cool. This is going to probably be a part one in a uh, series of two, <clears throat> because I am going to set up a file server using what's in this box. Oh wow. There it is. It is a mid-2011 Mac Mini. Oh wow, I've never actually held any of these in my hands before. Okay, so it didn't come with the power cable, but, and that's a big but, I have this power cable from a Lenovo laptop charger that actually fits in here. Oh, it's turning on. Oh, it, it chimed. Ooh. Wait a minute, it has an operating system. Let me... Oh my god! No way! This thing just works. Okay. I thought I was gonna have to fix it, but like, it just works! Oh my god. Mac OS High Sierra, Mac Mini, Intel Core i5, 4 gigabytes, AMD Radeon HD. It has a 500 gigabyte spinning hard drive. Wow. Okay, this was clearly used as like a media center. Oh, those are bones. Um. <laughs> Date, 17th of August, 2012. Ooh. Yeah, it works perfectly. So, that's amazing. Um, I've got a few things going on right now, actually. Um, so I am going to come back to this. Probably I'll just make this one video, which is awesome. I thought I have to do a repair, but... Um, you know, I'm going to reapply thermal paste, uh, wipe the hard drive, reinstall Mac OS High Sierra, and yeah. This assembly of the Mac Mini wasn't too hard. It did, however, seem extremely tedious as there were many things I needed to remove in order to get to the processor. Something I took great notice of was the 13 years of dust that had built up in the Mac. Unlike the 2010 iMac, which was spotless, this 2010 Mac Mini was caked with dust near every step of the way, and of course, the thermal paste was pretty crusty. Once thermal paste was reapplied, reassembly wasn't too difficult either. It was a bit frustrating at times, but it came back together nicely. After I finished reassembling it, I wiped the drive, and I installed macOS High Sierra onto the Mac Mini, and now we can begin the process of installing the drives and copying all my files to it. Okay, the Mac Mini is wiped, and it is ready. So what I am actually going to do, I'm going to move it all the way over there somewhere and have it plugged into my TV um, for a video and then I'm gonna have mostly all of this. These are four hard drive enclosures and two uh, crucial MX500 SSDs and I'm gonna have two HDDs and two SSDs in this file server so I'm gonna have to start taking stuff out of the boxes and also taking stuff out of my computer because I actually do still have a lot of stuff to sort. So this is not by any means gonna be like a full file server creation thing. There's still a lot of things I have to do off camera. Okay, so I have all four drives here and I'm going to plug them into the Mac Mini as so. Um, I've got it on the screen, but I've also got any desk here um, connected so that I can Oops, I just closed out of it by accident. But basically, um, I'm going to be doing this through my PC. So you're going to be seeing this as a screen recording of my PC as I set this up. Um, I hope this goes well. I have someone helping me out with this. The same person helps me out with like everything because they're so fucking smart. Anyway, <laughs> let's go to that. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I am going to be... Um, formatting the SSDs, as you can see, I have my two backup drives in here. So Storage 01 is actually going to become my backup of Storage 01. This was my original Storage 01 that was stored inside of my PC. And large videos was just some spare hard drive I had with a bunch of video files. If I open it up, I have a bunch of YouTube videos from years past. Anyway, but that, that's not important right now. Um, I have to format both of these. 
I just don't know which one is connected to which. Um, interesting, I'm looking at the drives lighting up and it turns out I actually got it backwards and the one I wanted to be Storage 01 is actually Storage 02 now. Um, I could just rename them. Yep, that one's definitely Storage 01 now. It's under sharing, file sharing. Um, I'm going to use SMB. I like how it 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 kind of like gave it a second name. I don't know which one this is though. Is it the is it the old one? Oh, it's the new one. Fuck. Okay, we're gonna have to format them eventually. Oh, there you are. Um. Oh, I have to map individual drives or something. Can't I just map all of them? Oh, okay. I finally figured it out. Uh, yeah, I don't... I can't... Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to solve this issue, like... You know what? I'm just gonna... Open both of these. Okay, I gotta remember. Okay. I'm gonna copy all this stuff. To here. Gotta remember, the one on the left... The one on the left is the backup drive, which either way I can tell after I format it. Nine hours. Oh my. This is going to be a while. Seven hours. Oh boy. Something I may have forgot to mention is that this is that I've mentioned it's a 2011 Mac Mini, which if you know... Um, has USB 2, not 3. The 2012 is the one that introduced USB 3. So I am running on USB 2.0 speeds, which is like a maximum of 800 megabits per second, I think it is. Which isn't that great. Um, and yeah, it really shows. Um, it really shows. Oh, fuck. Hi, it's me from the editing stage. Um, it's been a few days since I recorded most of that stuff, and I want to add a few things that I've discovered as I've been tinkering with the file server and learning about things. So, when I'm copying between my PC and the Mac Mini, um, I get a uh, transfer speed of about uh, 50 megabytes per second, which is about the equivalent of um, USB 2.0 speeds, which is 480 gigabits per second, which is somewhere around 55 megabytes per second. And the reason that you see 20 megabytes per second there, I've learned is not due to USB 2.0, but rather due to the uh, USB bus speed of the Mac Mini. I apologize for the noise. I am still currently in school in a very loud place. Um, so the reason it's the bus's problem is because, you know, USB 2.0 supports a maximum of 480 gigabits per second. Well, because it's transferring from one USB drive to another USB drive that halves the transfer rate, which means it can only go up to a max of about 240 megabits per second, and 20 megabytes per second is about 130 to 150 um, megabits per second. So it is within the range. It's not as best as it could be, but it's doing fine, especially because it's also transferring from a SSD to an HDD, so the um, RPM speed may also have a little bit to do with that, but I'm not 100% sure. That's all I really wanted to add, and back to the video. So anyway, um, I think this is where I'm going to actually end this video because there's not really much to do anymore. All I have to really do is transfer all my files, but I've pretty much got the whole file server set up. I know how to map network drives, and all I have left is to just copy all my files into the right folders between my computer and the file server and within the file server itself. And um, even the first operation I have to actually do, which is um, copy everything from the old storage 01 drive to the new storage 01 drive, is going to take about six hours. So I'm just going to head off to bed. Um, I'm just going to head to bed. It's going to be done in the morning. And I already know how to connect to it remotely with any desk um, on my laptop. So I can continue doing file transfers at school. Um, the thing is... Um, I'm not going to be able to actually do anything with Storage 02 because most of the Storage 02 stuff is on my PC and I have to deal with that 
at home. So I'm going to have to do that tomorrow, which is going to be the day that this is coming out. And I'm going to format the original storage O1 drive sometime during the day tomorrow and make it storage O1 backup. So with that, thank you for watching me create a file server out of a 2011 Mac Mini. Um, this is going to be cool. Thanks for watching. <laughs>